Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a hardware tour of the HP 620. This is more of a cons of a business-oriented laptop with uh, a bit more added security options underneath the hood, but it's easy to configure and has quite a few options going for it. It's a slightly older laptop by today's standards, so if you're a consumer looking to pick one of these up, they can be found for fairly cheap on Amazon and eBay, and they don't look half bad for a more professional-oriented you know, audience. So you can see that from the surface here, which is made out of this kind of interesting material reminds me of carbon fiber and it looks fairly classy in my opinion not as boring or as mundane as some of those other laptops marketed for the same segment uh, so pricing wise you have you know right now the street price I would say is around $300 or under which is pretty good for these specs uh, there's a base model which you see right now here is running on a core 2 duo processor so a little outdated of course and there's a uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM in addition to 500 gigabytes of built-in hard drive storage. There is a full-size optical drive, which I'll show you in a moment, and a few other uh, various ports of connection features that I'll show you as well. So as far as design, fairly interesting looking, but nothing too um, out of the ordinary, I would say. There aren't too many rubber accents either, so this isn't you know, the most rugged computer in the world either, but it looks really sleek, I would say. Also not the slimmest, as you can see here. So below here, there's access to a full-size SD card reader for expanding the memory, as well as feeding back images from a camera, perhaps. There's a 3.5 millimeter jacks for inputting a sound source, as well as outputting one. Um, there's also you know, one for the microphone, if you don't want to use the built-in mic. The other side includes the aforementioned full-sized uh, reader for DVDs, so you can write as well as burn your own data from DVDs, which is potentially useful you know, for business situations, as well as for software. There's also two more USB 2.0 ports on this side next to an Ethernet port, if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. On the other side, you have access to a, you know, two more, uh, one more USB 2.0 port next to a full-size HDMI port for video output. There's another uh, you know, VGA port if you want to, uh, again, connect it to an external monitor along with a dual uh, kind of 3.5 mil jack, both for the mic as well as for the headphones. So, so there is a dual or two ways for you to both input as well as output sound, one which is a combined port, uh, which is kind of nifty. Again, this is more of a consumer-based feature. It means that two people can be listening to maybe be music or watch a video when you're traveling on an airplane, for instance, and not have to split one earphone between two people. On the inside, you can see the same pattern be continued from the outside, that same carbon fiber finish. It uh, is marketed in lieu of, let's say, aluminum or metal, so again, that brings the cost down a little bit more for HP to produce this machine, but again, makes it a bit more consumer-oriented in terms of the design, despite being marketed for the uh, professional segment. So you can see here there's a multi-touch enabled trackpad with a uh, side a uh, key on the side here, which allows you to more easily navigate up and down through web pages and lists. And there's also one piece click key for the for the select as well as the right click, which I'm not the biggest fan of because they're not as responsive as split keys, but nonetheless better than a trackpad with uh, no keys at all. Um, so that is one of the design elements. And finally, the keyboard here is a full-size keyboard. They didn't really put in a dedicated numpad on the side, so that's a limitation some people not mind, might not mind, but some people might miss. Uh, with that being said, this isn't using an island or a chiclet style keyboard so that's one of the areas where HP were able to cut down costs a little bit not really too bad it's still a very responsive keyboard and after using it for a while you'll definitely get used to it and get a pretty good typing experience out of it but again it's uh, not as quite as tactile as clicky feeling as a standard island keyboard on the side here is access to some media controls including volume, skip tracks, escape. On the very top there's a dedicated row select for the brightness of the screen along with lock and so on and so forth. Finally the very center here features both the power on off switch as well as the stereo speakers which gets fairly loud although not very rich sounding. It's fairly tinny as expected. And then there is the screen which is a glossy 15.6 inch screen with a standard resolution. It's not IPS but uh, it gets really bright for viewing even under brighter and environments, but again, it does glare and attract quite a bit of fingerprints. On the very top, there is a 1.3 megapixel webcam for Skype and video conferencing, so pretty standard setup. A little bit disappointing that they didn't use a matte screen on here, which would have performed better outdoors, but uh, all in all, really not too bad either. So. Design-wise, really interesting laptop because it's more of a consumer-oriented, uh, sleek, looking laptop with not too many metal or soft touch rubber components to make it super durable but at the same time it does have decent components um, and there's options going up to the Intel Core i3 configuration as well if you want to pay a little bit more so not the not the best but not the worst and an interesting hybrid in my opinion between consumer and business uh, HP laptops you can check out more details about this in our upcoming review but for now this has been our video thanks for watching here at OS reviews this has been the HP 630 laptop computer